Okay, in this brief video, I'm just going to go over the instructions for your uh, first writing assignment. Um, I don't want you to be too stressed about this assignment. Uh, the main thing I'm looking for is how well you're able to frame the issue or the question um, that hopefully you've been thinking about for a few weeks now. Uh, so if you remember in first week, uh, sorry, in the first week, um, I asked you kind of think about like what's an important issue to you. Um, in week two, we started to think about, uh, you know, why politics is important um, for everyone, right? Uh, and then in week three, we started to think about barriers to participation or, you know, what makes these issues so difficult to solve, right? And the short answer, of course, is human beings. Um, so we want to kind of explore uh, how you can start to think about solutions um, and then really clearly explaining um, the limitations or the constraints uh, in trying to solve this problem because of human behavior. Um, so this, I titled this one Letter to My Future Self uh, because one of the main themes that you need to understand in political science uh, is this idea of predictability. It might make it a bit different than uh, you know, some other discipline. Um, so this is one of the things that you're supposed to be able to pick up in um, POL 51. Um, and you, know, you should be able to apply this in your other classes, uh, but we can work on that together. Um, so I pulled out this, this one kind of theme uh, from the novel, uh, Parable of the Sower. Um, and so you know, it's interesting, right? Because she wrote this book uh, you know, over, over 30 years now. Um, and yet she kind of predicted a moment similar to this, right? Uh, where folks have to leave their house uh, you know, think about in the urban environment here in New York, um, you know, for a lot of reasons. Whereas if you're in a wealthier suburb, uh, you could essentially get everything delivered to you. So there's this kind of interesting concept of walls um, and of how we separate each other, um, you know, in times of struggle, right, in times of difficulty. So how could she possibly have predicted something like this? Well, you know, it's, there's patterns in human history. So this is not the first time that there's been a global pandemic. Um, you've probably heard something about, um, you know, the, the Chicago flu or the Spanish flu, um, you know, when they, when they assigned names based on cities that they came from. Uh, but there's also been things like the avian flu, the swine flu, the bubonic plague, right? So if you study government and you study social science, you'll see that, um, you know, sickness uh, however you want to phrase it, is a common social problem, right? It's not unique to 2020. Um, and so you want to kind of think about your social problem this way. It's not going to be a unique problem. It's not going to be the first time a problem like this has ever occurred. Uh, so we can, we can look back to some historical ideas uh, to get some ideas about how to solve that particular problem. Um, so basically, a lot of this is just documenting, right? Taking good notes. Uh, but we can kind of predict points of conflict in the future. We can think about what the likely solutions are going to be. Uh, and we can also see what, what has been a difficulty uh, or a strain in the relationships among humans. Now, there's this kind of what I love about our particular epic, right, is that so much of what travels along the Internet uh, is incorrect. So you'll hear some people say something like history repeats itself. Uh, and that's not the phrase uh, from history. <laughs> um, the phrase is those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. Um, and there's variations of this going back to uh, the Greek writer Thucydides. And you know, the basic idea here is that you know, if, if you don't use knowledge and if you don't think about the future, uh, then of course, right, you're going to make the same mistakes that other people who also did not do this um, studying. Right. But on the other hand, if you can narrow down a social problem to an identified set of actors and solutions, then you're going to be a much better uh, predictor. Um, so kind of a classic example I, I tend to use is, you know, if you played poker, um, if it was the first time you ever played the game, I'm sure you could get lucky from time to time. Uh, but especially if you're playing with experienced players, you're going to lose more often than not. Uh, and that's because you have a weak sense of predictability. You're not sure what cards you're going to get. You're not going to sure uh, what the rules are. You're not sure of how other people are going to play. So the more you're able to study this kind of process, the better predictor you're going to be. 
And this comes up in the, the, the second half uh, of this novel. Um, so I want you to pay attention for that. Like, what are the things that you can study to help you be a better predictor? And then finally, um, for your letter itself, I want you to put these ideas, to get ideas together. Um, and so let's say we had a textbook for this class. Um, this would be titled the Advocacy Coalition Framework. It'd probably come in around 125 pages, right? Uh, so you'd have to read all this other stuff to get to this point. I think you can understand this concept uh, through this assignment. So basically, um, you know, if you go back to that pluralism uh, kind of concept uh, or the idea that people are competing for influence, um, you know, most often they'll, they'll kind of join forces, right? They'll join a group uh, and they'll put forth a policy that they think is best. Uh, and you can kind of look for this in the novella, in the in the parable of the sower novel. Um, but you could look at this in your own life, right? People in your family will kind of join interests in order to put forth a proposal. So in political science terms, we call that a coalition, right? And so because there's two parties, right, the Republicans and the Democrats, then it's easier to think about this as coalition A and coalition B. And then when you look down, it says decisions by governmental authorities. What we mean here are like the specific actions of uh, Congress, right? So when they pass a bill, uh, when the president signs that piece of legislation. Um, and then from there, you have all the people who have to kind of uh, implement or, or uh, execute this law. Um, and so there's thousands of people in that kind of uh, process, but you know it tends to come down to just a couple uh, policies. So, you know, it's kind of this dynamic interactive system. Um, and I'll probably try to explain that a bit more, but I don't need you to show me that you're an expert on this. What I need you is just try to think about um, framing your social issue in this way, right? So this is how, you know, this is the template I think you should use. Um, you know, it's the year 2021 and you're concerned most about what? And that's where I want you to try to be clear about the social problem uh, that you're interested in. And then the coalitions on two sides of this issue include, right? And that could be, um, you know, the American Medical Association. It could be NASA. Uh, it could be Mothers Against Drunk Driving, right? It could be any of these groups uh, that have formed a coalition, right? A coalition is just something we know about. Um, you know, it could also be something, um, you know, like a corporation, right? It could be Google has said that they think this should happen. Um, and then the solutions that are being advocated, right, or, or proposed or talked about on, on the media by Republicans are, and then do the same thing for Democrats, right? So, so far you kind of have like four or five ways of looking at this problem. Uh, and then based on that research that you've done, um, you'd say like, you know, historically, how, how do people tend to solve this problem, right? Uh, if, if there's a shortage of the vaccine, right? That's happened before. This isn't the first time this has ever happened. So how did they how did they do that with measles, for example? Um, and then try to make your prediction, right? So in the year 2025, this issue will be, you know, most likely solved this way. Uh, I'm not expecting you to do more than two pages here. I think you could do this in a page, page and a half. Um, I just want again just see are you able to frame the social issue based on the concepts that we've covered in class so far. Um, so again, you know, I want you to make sure you put some effort into this, uh, but I don't want you to stress out about this as if it was like a 10-page research paper. We're just kind of getting our ideas onto paper for the first time in this semester.